Yeah, let's talk a little bit more, just expand the back of the New Testament, as you say, as it were, with Revelation and Second and Third John and Peter and all that. Uh, Second Peter. Why were those not as early on? Now, you say you, with, with uh, Athanasius in the 360s, that was already accepted, etc. cetera. Um, but before that, in the 180s with Irenaeus, why was that still like, well, you know, we're not really sure? Because that's where some people might point to and say, see, it's not Bible, therefore blank. Or C, we have to mature it and make it acceptable or, or something like that. What's going on there? I know you mentioned persecution. At, at the else? risk of being very simplistic for the sake of time, um, there was no one uh, originally who whose name appeared on the oldest documents of Hebrews. And so there were debates about authorship from mm. earliest times. That was... The biggest issue there um, for the book of James, uh, Martin Luther in the 1500s was not the first person to ever notice that James could be read as in tension with the Apostle Paul on faith and works. And so that issue was debated from early times on. Mm. Um, Second Peter is written in the Greek in a completely different style from first Peter. Is it plausible to say the same writer did both of those? Second and third John and Jude um, are just incredibly short. Yeah. Second and third John seem to be written to private individuals. Um, do those books have timeless truth for the entire church for all ages? And then Revelation, not surprisingly, um, elicited all kinds of interpretations from the earliest days onward really it's not like, like today at all right i mean every, yeah. we're all exactly there were um, one step there have been there. a few new <laughs> interpretations people have come up with over the years but most of them find their antecedents in the early church and so there was some impetus in some circles simply not to deal with that mm. issue Gotcha. But for the sake of comparison, we we actually have somewhere around 30 different lists uh, in varying degrees of completeness of what different Christians from the second through the sixth centuries compiled. Mm -hmm. And the number who would um, not just <clears throat> raise questions, but actually disagree with accepting any of those seven books is like three or four at most. Mm. And the number of lists that add um, otherwise orthodox second century writings um, are like three or four at most. Um, what, is a lot in the in the public eye and has been uh, since it was discovered in the late 1940s. All of the Gnostic literature, mm -hmm. um, as far as we can tell, these weren't being put forward by anybody. Um, not even the Gnostic writers themselves. Now, maybe <laughs> we've lost something. Yeah, uh, but uh, we don't actually have explicit sayings uh, from the Gnostic writers saying, hey, this is our canon, not what you guys have. Yeah. If anything, they tried to attribute their writings to already respected Orthodox Christian authors, probably because they knew uh, they could never get a hearing unless some people believed that that's where they came from. Right. So that would be like the Gospel of Thomas. Of course, Thomas was, you know, the doubting Thomas, the guy with the, you know, I'm going to see Jesus resurrected. I'm not going to believe otherwise. And of course, Gospel of Judas. Uh, those are all second century. Are there any into the third century as well? Or are they all? Oh, the... Yeah. Okay. Second through, if, if you get a hold of a, a collection of what sometimes is called the New Testament Apocrypha, um, which has nothing to do with the Old Testament Apocrypha, the books that Catholics canonize and Protestants don't. Mm -hmm. New Testament Apocrypha just refers to other works of the same literary genres, Gospels, Acts, Letters, and Apocalypses 
you will find collections um, that range from the second to the sixth centuries. Wow. Wow. I didn't know it went that late. Um, no, that's great. 